Hey, welcome back to the show. Today we're gonna to show you how to use the Carl Zeiss Zeiss Icon. This is a Carl Zeiss camera and it's not the Zeiss Icon we all know of medium format and six by nine, but a 35 millimeter version. It's a rangefinder camera, electronically controlled, which means you need a battery to operate it. And it does have manual advance and manual rewind. But this is a quite a nice camera. It uses Leica M mount for the lenses. So any Leica uh, lens, Zeiss Icon lens, um, XR lens will work on the Zeiss Icon. It has frame lines for different lenses, mostly based on the your own line of lenses. So there's 85 frame lines, 50, 35, uh, 28, and so on. The viewfinder is really, really big, um, very comfortable, but also the patch is extremely sensitive for you moving your eye from the center of the patch. So let's start with the anatomy of this camera. So on the front, we have the button for releasing the lens or putting on the lens. It has a blue dot like the lens is, and then we can put this back on. Also, you can notice the uh, shutter has metal blades and uh, they are uh, colored differently. That's where it's reading off the light meter. It has probably a little optical eye up there that can see the light meter and meter from within the lens, not outside the lens. Then we have frame line selector, which is like always to preview if you want to change the lens. It doesn't do anything else but previews. Rangefinder little window, uh, frame lines window, and the viewing window. Then we have strap lugs here on the sides. If we go to the side here, we have the flash sync port here on the side, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, PC sync, flash sync. Uh, to open the door of the uh, back, so is here. So basically you have to do a little drawing like left and up. Uh, you can't just go up, it won't open on its own. And then if we go to the other side, strap lug only in the hinge. On the back we have the little window to film a uh, reminder. So if this film is inside, you would see exactly what film, the Kodak 236 exposures. Then you have this button, which is like an AI AEL lock. So it locks the exposure value. So if you are on A, you basically press it and it locks the exposure. Uh, the viewfinder is here, is big and has a bit of a rubber. So for glasses, it's kind of nice. On the top, we have serial number, hot shoe, which also does a PC sync just for strobes or for viewfinders, external viewfinders. Then we have uh, basically shutter speeds uh, from 2000 of a second all the way to bulb. And then we also have A as an aperture priority. So you choose the aperture on your lens and it does that. This just moves like this and it's fairly simple. If you are on the A mode, then this is A, but you can also have exposure compensation like you see here. You can go plus or minus depending if you wanna push or pull your film as a way to uh, fake the ISO. Or if you're using a, you want a backlight situation, you want to, you know, compose, like expose for the backlit Im image, you can go plus minus as you want. Uh, to get out of a, you just basically go there and now you're 2000 and then you're 125 of the, the flash sync. Uh, this or slower will sync flash properly. Focal plane is here. Uh, shutter release is here. And then it has a screw for uh, screw uh, release. And then there's the on and off. So this is off, this is on, now it should work. Then it has the frame uh, number here. S is, is, is empty or finished, so you have that. And the lever for advancing. Like I said, it's electronic, so it won't do anything unless I put a battery in. Then to the bottom, we have tripod mount here. Uh, we have the button for rewinding. You have to press this button and then you have to pull this up and um, basically like that, you rewind. And to get the film out, you have to pull it out like that. This is one of the systems I don't like of this camera because it's kind of dangerous to like hit it and bend this. So I'm not big fan of that. So let's go into the operation of the camera. Let's start by putting in a battery. So we grab the bottom, grab a coin and unscrew this. Uh, these threads are usually quite small, so just don't force anything either way, either unscrewing or screwing. We don't want to break anything. Um, so this uh, uses uh, not this battery, but two um, LR44s. So let me go get that. So there we have our two batteries. Um, it shows the plus in the little spring on the bottom. So plus on these is the uh, flat side. So 
let's try to put that in one two and then put the lid back on when i put the battery lid back on i usually go back counterclockwise a little and then clockwise so i don't damage the threads these are very thin and easy to damage if you do something too hard so that now is in if we actually turn on the camera we can shoot as you just heard it's alive so we can turn it off let's go ahead and start with the lens so press the button turn counterclockwise remove the lid grab a Leica lens or any M mount lens or LTM adapted red dot on the Leica's blue dot on the Zeiss icon like their lenses put the lens on turn till you hear click now you're ready to shoot. So basically it's super simple. Aperture is controlled with the front of the lens. Focus is controlled with this on the lens, which you can see the marks from one meter, a little bit less. And then you have the hyperfocal mark etchings on here. So that means if I'm F16 and I'm focused at you know, 1.5 meters, everything will be in focus from one meter all the way to five meters, theoretically. Um, so that is how you operate. Then you can choose the aperture that you wanted, you, the shutter speed, and you can look through the window and you'll have some indicators to see if it actually is too dark or not. Let's turn it on. So how it does it is it shows on the left hand the shutter speeds and the one you're selected is fixed and the one it recommends is blinking. So in this case, it's... Uh, recommending 1 60th of a second so we should go there and then we can take a picture advance and go to the next one one thing to note that is how it works you have one two thousand of a second so if we were wide open and we could see it's blinking over two thousand so we should go all the way up to two thousand that would be the proper shutter speed for this uh, this is now saying ISO 3200. We're going to change that, but it's very simple to change it. You just have to lift the crown and twist to whatever you want. We can go, let's see, 800, 400. And that would be a different kind of film or pushing or pulling your film. So that's how you operate it on the manual mode. So you basically have aperture, shutter speed, and the ISO dialed when you put your film in if you're not pushing. If you want to go to aperture priority, like I said, just put the A align with the dot, and now it just shoots. So basically, you put whatever aperture you like, you point wherever you want, take a picture, and that should be properly exposed because it's exposing by metering through the lens. Um, if you do want to lock it, like I said, you press the button, and this button, if I don't remember correctly, if I don't, you know, if I remember correctly, is a press one time, it does it all the time, press another time, it stops. So if you press it, just keep in mind that you will be in aperture priority uh, lock. Um, so that's how you do it. And you press it again, it turns off. And then to turn off the camera, just turn it off here and you're ready. As you can see, my film counter is working. So if I turn it on, shoot and advance. Now it's going to four, five, six, and so on. If I want to rewind, like I said, I press the button here, lift this rewind film but let's go ahead and load a roll of film so here we have a roll of color plus a 200 from kodak let's open the back like i said this back is side left then up and it pops open and to load the film you are going to have to basically pull you can't really do it like that so you have to pull the bottom out now as you see it stops protruding it goes flush and you can drop in your roll now you have your uh, film leader you have these cuts on the other side you have to kind of like lock it into one of them and then you want to push this in and shoot and advance oh now it's because it's an aperture it's going to do like a super long exposure you actually can see there we go now we can advance so we advance our film just make sure that you're not doing like me and putting it against the table where it's pitch black. So now that is uh, properly spooled in so we can make sure that it's right. We close it. Once we close it, we can shoot. Keep on exposing and advancing. And this camera, you can see it's advancing here. 
So that means the film is properly loaded. As I said, you can see the little film uh, reminder window here, and that's ready to shoot. Um, so all you have to do is that, and you can change your ISO. Like I said, lift the crown, go to 200, and now we're ready for Color Plus. Now we just have to focus with the rangefinder patch. So let's talk about the patch. The patch is basically a dual image in the middle that when the two images coincide, it means it's focused. So like if you go into there, boom, you're focused. If it's a little double image, you're not focused. This is how rangefinder work. You need to see through, you have this window that projects a second image into this window with a little mirror and it can be focusing and you can shoot like that. Most people with rangefinders, unless you're shooting portraits, are going to be shooting with hyperfocal, which means you stop down your lens to like f8, and you can see how it stops down. Do you see the aperture blades? These lenses are basically shutterless, so they're just aperture blades and focusing. So you will stop down your lens to like f8, f11, and then focus somewhere where you're comfortable to, with shooting, let's say two meters, or maybe you know 35, you want to be more like on 1.5 meters. So F8 gives you focus from 1.2 meters to around two and a half meters. So anytime someone's in that range, you can shoot and you should be in acceptable focus, which is what we call hyperfocal. Um, and that's all you have to do. Just shoot and enjoy. Um, then when you're done, turn it off. It does not drain a ton of battery if you leave it on. I've left this camera on for weeks, not a big deal, but also always carry two LR44 batteries if you can, and you'll be okay. Once you are done with the roll, like I said, let's say we turn it on, let's take a couple more pictures. When you're done with the roll, you press the button, you lift this little flap, and you turn cl clockwise. Uh, no, counterclockwise, actually. Just follow the arrow. Once you notice the film is not so hard and you actually will hear a noise, there, then the leader is here. I'm not gonna go all the way because I wanna reuse this roll, but now all we have to do is open and you see, I left so little. Um, this film is now ready to be pulled out, sent to your lab, or developed in your own darkroom, and in my case, reused for another video. But yeah, that's how you use and um, enjoy the Zeiss Icon from Carl Zeiss. Uh, it's an amazing camera. It's the Zeiss Icon ZM, if I haven't said that before. They made a rangefinder less or viewfinder less version. The SW for super wide lenses uh, had external, basically hot shoe viewfinders. You could shoot like 12 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 15 millimeters, 21 millimeters. Super fun camera. This is uh, electronically controlled, which means if the batteries die or something inside and the components dies, it's dead. It's not a mechanical camera. So if you run out of batteries, it's just the paperweight. Uh, just remember that. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. See you in the next video. Bye.